I want to wrap up this discussion by doing a few examples using complex ion and the crystal field theory idea. So the first one here, it says you have a complex ion. This is your cyano complex ion, cyanoferrite complex ion, right? It's known to have one unpaired electron. The question is, does the CN ligand produce a strong or weak field? Okay, just based on that information. The way you want to do this is, again, you want to think about the two different possible configuration of the electrons, right? The, in order for you to do that, you need to know how many electrons are present in this particular transition metal ion. So you have to take this species and break it down into its ligand and its transition metal ion. So I'm going to do that here on the right. To do this, we're really going to need to do several steps. One is need to figure out the charge of the transition metal ion. We know that each of this ligand, Cn, is minus one. So if we get a three minus in total, that means our iron must be a plus. Okay. Once you know that, then you need to determine how many of those electrons in the metal ions are in your d orbital. So because the iron is plus 3, we need to determine the electron configuration of the plus 3 iron. I have here the electron configuration of the iron atom, which is given right here. So it's AR and then 4s2 and 3d6. Uh, if I'm removing 3 electrons to give me that plus 3 charge that means i'm going to take it out remember always first from the 4s and then one of the 3d here now i'm not going to move any of the single ones because remember because of hans rule as you learn in general chemistry one we're going to first knock out one of those paired electrons so that means i have five single electrons that are left that i have tribute in my complex ion. Now, how would I describe it like hence on whether we have a weak field situation, which means our delta is small, or we have a strong field situation where our delta is large. If our delta is small, then we would follow Hunt's rule, meaning that we're not going to pair up any of the electrons until we fill all the orbitals first. So this is sort of like the same, like filling a degenerate orbital. You're going to fill all the electrons one at a time, before you start pairing them up. Okay, so in this case, I would do it this way. One, two, three, four, five, since I have five electrons. What about if I have a strong field case? Since in this case, my delta is large, it's not possible for me to put the electron on the higher level. I have to start pairing them first. And in this case, in other words, you're really comparing sort of two different situations, both of which are going to increase energy but then you're trying to find the one that is least destabilizing. There's a little better compared to the other one. So if I have delta that is large, then my five electrons is gonna be placed this way, one, two, three. If I try to put it here, that's too much energy. So instead, what I would do is I would pair them up first with the bottom one. So that's how the five electrons would look like. So that's the difference between the two electron configuration. Now, I have experimental evidence that tells that the complex ion only has one unpaired electron based on my experimental evidence. That experimental evidence could come from spectroscopy or that could come from, let's say, the magnetic property measurements. But in this case, since we were told that we only have one unpaired electrons, then our answer must be a strong field case in this case. So because it's a strong field case, then the CN minus ligand must be a strong field ligand. Okay, so you can see that how, that's how we determine actually the place of each of those ligands in that spectrochemical series is first by doing this type of experiment. All right, let's take a look at the second question. It says, predict the number of unpaired electrons in the complex ion for uh, CrCn6, 4 minus. Okay, so this is your cyano complex again, but then now with chromium as your metal. So how do we do this in this case? Very similar to the previous question, we're going to first look at how many electrons is present in the metal ion? The reason is because those are the electrons that's going to be distributed, the electron configuration that you have to figure out in your two different cases, right? The weak field and the strong field case. So my ligand is CN minus, and there's six of them, that's negative six. Uh, my total is minus four, so that means my CR must be plus two, okay? All right, since I have a plus two CR, that allows to determine how many electrons I have. This is a CR in the case of the atom. Now, actually the correct configuration is one of these electrons is separated. It's actually placed here in the 3D, okay? But then in order for me to get CR two plus, I'm gonna have to knock out a couple of those electrons. So I'm gonna knock out 
one from 4s and then one from the 3d so i have four electrons left that i should distribute the question then becomes how should i distribute should i four of them this way or should i do it so that that fourth one is paired up with one of these guys okay so which one should I pick? That depends on what kind of metal ion, what type of charge the metal ion has, and what type of ligand we're dealing with. Which means you're going to have to look up a little bit on those information that's listed in the notes. Now, if this were a quiz or an exam, you'll be given some information about the strength of these ligands in terms of its ability to split the d orbital we but if we look up the information for our ligand, which is the cyano ligand. That's actually right here, very, very close to the top of the ranking in terms of its ability to split the d orbital. So this is a strong field ligand. So if it's a strong field ligand, I would expect my delta to be large, okay? My delta is large, that means I would put my electron first in the lower level energy before I start putting it on the top. So that means my configuration would look something like that, okay? So that'll be the answer to the question and then once you know that then you can answer how many unpaired electrons are actually there in this case we have two unpaired electrons of course that's going to affect the magnetic property of your complex ion let's take a look at our last question here it says aqua hexa aqua titanium complex ion has violet color question is what wavelength does the ion absorb okay so you're going to need to refer to that table that i showed you earlier so if you have a violet color then you're going to absorb yellow green which means it's 570. this would not be a table that you need to memorize so if a question is asked about something like this you'll be given that information about what is being absorbed or you you'll be given the table so you can interpret what is being absorbed but in this case we can say that the wavelength that's absorbed is 570 nanometer. And the next question is, what is the value of the crystal field splitting energy, which is your delta, for this ion? If it absorbs 570 nanometer, then what's the actual delta? Well, remember we said earlier that the delta, in fact, we have it right here, in that equation, is just equal to hc over lambda so in other words the photon that is being absorbed the energy of that photon has to match the gap in energy between the lower d orbital set versus the higher orbital set right the t2g and the eg and so i can calculate therefore the delta by just taking hc over lambda and so i'm showing the calculation here on the right remember that h it's just 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joule second. Uh, speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8 meter per second. Our wavelength is 570 nanometer, which is 570 times 10 to the minus 9 meter. That allows me to cancel these units, leaving me with just joules at the end. And so the delta is 3.487 times 10 to the minus 19 joule.